The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Well, welcome to this learning session. I am Waz Moses, your mathematics teacher. Before we begin the lesson, let us look at the correction of assignment of the last lesson. Find the next three terms in the following arithmetic sequences. A. We have the sequence 1, 3, 5, 7. To get the next three terms, we first identify the rule. The rule is from 1 to 3, we discover that we have added 2. From 3 to 5, we notice that we have added 2. And from 5 to 7, we notice that we have added, we've added 2. That is why we think the rule is add 2 to each term. And similarly, if we add 2 to 7, we obtain 9. If we add 2 to 9, we obtain 11. And if we add 2 to 11, we obtain 13, giving us the next three terms as 9, 11, 13. We move to the B part. The sequence in B is 10, 5, 0, negative 5. Looking at that sequence, from 10 to 5, you see that 5 has been subtracted. From 5 to 0, 5 has also been subtracted. From 0 to negative 5, 5 has been subtracted. So, the rule is subtract 5 from each preceding term. And following this same rule, we see that to get the next term, we subtract 10, we subtract 5, neg 5 from negative 5. And when you subtract 5 from negative 5, you have, you obtain negative 10. Now, if you subtract 5 from negative 10, you obtain negative 15. Similarly, obtaining, subtracting 5 from negative 15, you have negative 20. Two, find the, ne the next three terms in the following geometric sequences. A, 1, 2, 4, 8. Now, you should remember that we said for geometric sequence, we should either be multiplying or dividing. And when you look at the sequence 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, you notice that there is a constant multiplication there. And what they are multiplying by is 2. If you multiply 1 by 2, it gives you 2. If you multiply 2 by 2, it gives you 4. And if you multiply 4 by 2, you obtain 8. So the rule is multiply each preceding term by 2. So the next three terms will be, as you can see on your screen, 8 times 2, which will give you this 16. 16 times 2, it gives you obtain 32. And 32 times 2, you obtain 64. So those are the next three terms. B, 100, 50, 25, 25 over 2. Looking at that sequence in B, again, we already told that they are geometric sequences. 
We just need to identify whether we are multiplying or we are dividing. And when we look at 100 to 50, you see that they have divided by 2. 50 to 25, they have divided by 2. And of course, the last one from the given sequence is 25 over 2, which means that the rule is, as you can see on the screen, divide each preceding term by 2. If that is done, the next three terms will be to get the first term from the three terms, we divide 22 over 5 over 2, 25 over 2 by 2. And if you divide 25 over 2 by 2, it will be the same as you're taking 25 over 2 and dividing by 2. And division by 2 here means 25 on 2 times 1 over 2. And in this case, 25 times 1 gives 25 because nothing can be simplified. And 2 times 2 gives 4. So in that like manner, dividing 25 over 4 by 2, we obtain 25 over 8. Dividing 25 over 8 by 2, we obtain 25 over 16. And we get the next three terms as required. We will be continuing with the module titled Introduction to Plane Geometry. This module, again, is divided into three topics, distances, angles, and triangles. Our topic is on triangles. And the, triang the topic triangles is divided into four lessons. The first lesson there is relationship between angles in intersecting line. The second lesson is angles in two parallel lines and a transversal. The third lesson is angles in two parallel lines and a transversal, but there we are going to be concentrating on vertically opposite angles and corresponding angles. The fourth lesson, which is the last, will be on angles in, inter in two parallel lines and a transversal, where we'll be concentrating and looking at alternate and co extrants. In other words, we call them co exterior and uh, co-interior angles. The lesson proper is the first lesson, which is the relationship between angles in intersecting lines. Here is a plan for the lesson. We'll start with the objectives, prerequisites, problem situation, learning activity, application exercises, and end up with an assignment. As the objective, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify angles in intersecting lines, state and apply the ad angle addition theorems of straight lines, line angles. You should also be able to find the missing angles formed at the point of intersection between, and between lines. As a prerequisite, Learners can already identify and name angles. Learners can also draw intersecting lines. Learners can measure angles using a protractor. We look at some exercises to actually verify our prerequisite so that we should be fully prepared for this lesson. Identify and name the following angles. You have some angles given to you there. So those are the angles. Four angles that have been displayed. As a solution to this activity, we get the first angle. Look at that angle. 
As you already know on angle, basic notion on angles, when an angle is not open up to get to a right angle, we call it an acute angle. So that angle indicating 45 degrees is an accurate angle. We get the next angle. Now, from your notion of basic notion of angles, when an angle is like crossing the vertical line, we score those type of angles obtuse angles obtuse so which means that the angle beta is obtuse the next angle when an angle intersects at the point where the vertical line and the horizontal line meet we know that that angle is always 90 degrees. And angles which measure 90 degrees are called right angles. So the theta there is a right angle. Lastly, the angle omega. Looking at the measure of that angle omega, which is an angle on a straight line, and the measure is 180 degrees. When an angle measures 180 degrees, when an angle measures 180 degrees, and that angle is on a whole side of a straight line, that angle is called a straight angle. So all straight lines, as we already know, their measure of angles will always give 180 degrees. So that angle omega, which is another name we can use to denote, though it is not our English alphabet letter, that angle is a straight angle. Two, exercise two. Draw an angle of your choice and measure the size of the angle. The Draw two lines, making sure that they intersect each other and identify their point of intersection. As a solution to this, we are asked to draw an angle of your choice and measure the size of the angle. Here, this is an angle we've drawn, and when you look at the number indicating 50 there, 50 degrees. This is an angle that has been drawn. And when you measure using a protractor, you obtain the 50 degrees you're seeing there. So that is how that angle was measured. B. Draw two lines, making sure that, making sure they both intersect each other and identify their points of intersection. A line can be drawn to face in any direction. If I have a line, line, supposing this is a line, and I have another line, if this line happens to make this other line, it must have a point where the two intersect, and this is the point of intersection. So that is the two lines drawn with the point of intersection indicated. Now, we look at a real-life situation that can be related to the lesson. To draw two intersecting lines and find out how many pair of vertically opposite angles can be formed at the point of, at their point of intersection. Come on. Johnson, a Form 2 student, after drawing the two intersecting lines, argues that 
there are four pairs of vertically opposite angles. How will you prove to John to Johnson that the answer his answer is wrong? Yeah, we keep track of this problem situation, identify the problem in it, and we'll come back to it at the end of the lesson. Learning activity one. Given the image representing a pair of scissors, as shown below, please, this is a pair of scissors. I'm sure everybody can identify scissors. A. Draw two lines, each on one arm of the pair of scissors, making sure that they both intersect at the pivot. B. Taking the pivot as the vertex, measure each angle formed and write down their sizes. C. Extract the two lines from the pair of scissors with all the indicated angles. D. State any visible observation and write down the relationship between the lines and the angles obtained in B above. E. What name is used to describe angles formed at the intersection of two lines? We look at the solution to this learning activity. A says draw two lines, each on one arm of the pair of scissors, making sure they both intersect at the pivot. On your screen, you see that the scissors has some lines labeled L1 and L2. So we've just drawn the two lines to intersect at the pivot. B, we're expected to follow the instruction for B. B, taking the pivot as the vertex, measure each angle form and write down their sizes. So if we were to use some standard measuring instruments to get those angles used from the scissors, you see that four angles will be formed at the intersection of these two lines. And those four angles, you can see them indicated on the scissors. So the four angles, as you see there, we can denote them still using those uh, Greek letters of their alphabet as alpha, beta, theta, and omega. That is how those letters are called in the Greek language. See, extract the two lines from the pair of scissors with all the indicated angles. Now, when you look at C and you see what you have here, you notice that the scissors has been taken away and only the angles that were formed on the scissors are visible. So if we can vividly make an illustration of what is happening there, the angles on that scissors were as such. Here we have alpha, here we have omega, here we have beta, and this is theta. your observation and the relationship between the lines and the angles obtained in B. Please, as you can rightly see on your screen, we still have the two lines and the angles form on the lines. And when you look at those angles, we see that how many angles are there? It is observed that four angles are formed at the point where the two lines intersect with two pair of congruent angles. In the course of this lesson, you're going to actually 
understand again the full meaning of congruent angles. A relationship, we also have to state the relationship between these angles. Opposite angles are opposite angles are congruent. Now, I said when you look at this line, the two lines intersecting, they are formed four angles. And these four angles are not any kinds of angles. They are in opos opposite sense to each other. This one is opposite to this, and this one is opposite to this. And the relationship between them, as we stated, is that these opposite angles like this are congruent. The world is coming again. And before you get to understand it clearly, you should already know that the congruency is trying to explain that the angles have something similar. This angle alpha and beta are also opposite angles. And we are still saying that opposite angles are congruent. Now, sizes of angles form on the same side of each line add up to 180 degrees. Please, that relationship, if you want to clearly observe a relationship like that, we have one line, we have another line that was passing through. But now if I cut this line and end here, you see that angle alpha was here, and the other angle the other angle, which was theta, was here. <coughs> now, you see that if I consider only this line, this angle and this angle form an angle on a straight line. That is why in that relationship, we are told that sizes of angles form on the same side of each line at up to 180 degrees. What name is used? to describe angles formed at the intersection of two lines. Pairs of opposite angles formed are called vertically opposite angles. Now please, this concept has already been explained, but what was lacking was to tell you the proper denotation of those angles. We said opposite angles, pair of opposite angles. Now, we are telling you formally in mathematics that this angle, when two lines meet, intersect like this, and they form angles here, beta, omega. So, these opposite angles, they are not just opposite angles, they are called in mathematics vertically opposite angles. These two lines, they are also opposite. We still call them vertically opposite angles. So pairs of opposite angles form at are called vertically opposite angles. Angles form on the same side of each line are called adjacent angles. I have already explained that those angles are up to 180 degrees. So the angles form on one side of each line, like this one, if I consider this line, these two are adjacent. If I consider this line, still this line on this side, these two are adjacent. But if I were to consider this line, you see that these two, two are adjacent. So you just need to properly understand the concept and it goes. Now, as our take home concepts for this particular lesson, we will understand that Whenever two lines like that intersect, opposite angles form at the point of intersection of two lines are called vertically opposite angles, which is what I've just tried to explain here. And when you look at your screen, you see them illustrated by alphabet A here, B in opposite sense. We have C and D in opposite sense. So those are vertically opposite angles. And the theorem we should take home also is that vertically opposite angles are always congruent, meaning that their measures are the same, that their measures are equal. 
Angles form on the same side of each line are called adjacent angles. That one has well has been well explained, and the concept that those angles add to 180 has been illustrated here by angle A plus angle B. You see it, you see their position, and you see here angle A plus angle B equals 180 degrees. The sum of measures of two adjacent angles is 180 degrees. To consolidate what we have learned today, here are some application exercises. Exercise one, find the measures of angles marked X, Y, and Z in the intersecting line below. Please, when you look at your screen, you see those are two lines intersecting. And you see the position of X, Y, Z. As a solution to this, we have two intersecting lines. An angle has been formed here 45 degrees. You have another angle to be formed here, and you ask to calculate it, which is x. Another angle is supposed to be formed here, represented by z. And another angle is supposed to be formed here, represented by y. Please, here from the concepts we have just learned, it is simple. Looking at 45 and z, you see that they are vertically opposite angles. And we say that vertically opposite angles are equal, are congruent, meaning that their measures are equal. Okay, now this is the measure of 45 degrees. So if this angle is congruent to this angle, it means that z is equal to 45 degrees. And another concept we've just learned is that if we choose a line and we have all angles on the same side of that line, those angles add up to 180 degrees. So y plus 45 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. So to find y, we just subtract 45 from 180. 180 minus 45. And this gives us 135 degrees. So, please, on your screen, that's the solution. Z is 45 degrees, vertically opposite angles. As we have already explained, Y and 45 are adjacent angles. We look at the angles X and Y. We see that X and Y are vertically opposite angles. We've already obtained a solution for Y. That Y is 135, which means that X is equal to Y and should also be 135 degrees. To draw two intersecting lines and find at how many pairs of vertically opposite angles can be formed at their point of intersection. Johnson, a Form 2 student, after drawing the two intersecting lines, argues that there are four pairs of vertically opposite angles. How will you prove to John that his answer is wrong? That is our real life situation we face at the beginning of the lesson. Let us now look at the solution. Solution. Now, to prove to John and verify, to tell him that his answer is wrong, from what we've just learned, you draw two lines and you identify angles that are called vertically opposite angles. If we have A, B, and we have C here, and D there, you make John to understand that A and B form a pair, which is one pair, a pair. C and D form a pair, which is one pair. One pair and another one pair gives two pairs of vertically opposite angles. And then John will clearly see that 
he was making a mistake. So pairs of vertically opposite angles are A and B, C and D. Thus, the two lines above form two pairs of vertically opposite angles at the point of intersection instead of four pairs as John claimed. Now, to practice what we have learned today, you need to take home some assignment, questions for the assignment. Find the sizes of the angles marked with letters in the following diagrams. Please, here we have only one diagram. There are not two diagrams, but with different angles to be meant to be found. So we have that. I just wanted to explain that it is a diagram and not diagrams. Okay, that is A and this is B. B has a different diagram. So we have come to the end of this lesson. Our next lesson will be on angles in two parallel lines and a transversal. <laughs> Ona tege minga matege nyum Ona tege majang matege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Ngani bana matege mot Ngani lakiri watege ndom Yeso tinambia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia niña ne injo biayen